Question. Hey, Governor, thanks for taking my you call. Bet, I'm curious as to your thought process behind supporting the Atlantic Coast Pipeline running through Nelson County and not using right-of-ways to build it, but to go right through people's front yards, backyards, and to put in danger uh, an entire uh, four-season ski resort, wintergreen resort, uh, that has only one entrance and one exit and a pipeline going right through the, uh, the, the guardhouse and the entranceway. All right, Larry, let's let the governor answer. You, a lot of folks saying, you know, you ran on a clean energy platform, but you support the Atlantic Coast Pipeline, and that contradicts what you Well, it doesn't. First on. of all, the, there's no one has done more. If you go back and go to my website on the clean energy, the initiatives that we're doing on clean energy, wind, solar. Uh, you know, when I became governor, we had 18... Uh, megawatts of solar by the time I leave office will be over 400. That is a 20 times increase. I've called for our state. 8% of all the juice we use should be from renewables. So we have leaned in. I've reestablished the Climate Change Resiliency Committee. So, you know, I have been out there on these clean energy issues. I'm glad Larry raised the pipeline. There's a lot of misinformation. First, as it relates to the pipeline, I have no authority on the pipeline. It is a federal issue. Now, the state does issue air and water permits. But that is done statutorily. So if Dominion files it and they meet this, the requirements in the statute, they get approved. If they file it and they don't meet it, they get denied. I, as governor, do not have the right to call down to the DEQ and say, well, I don't like this. Therefore, I want you to forget what the regulations say. You saw that the Republicans sued me on restoration of rights when the Constitution was clear I had the authority. Could you imagine if I started taking their statutory authority? So I just want to, you know, listen, I, and people, a lot of people protest when I go around, and I actually love it. That's democracy. But I don't have the authority. I cannot deny a air and water permit as governor. I don't have the authority. It's done by statute. If you don't like the regs and if they get approved, then you need to talk to the legislature to change the law. I cannot change it. It is FERC. Uh, federal permit. The other big issue I want to mention is I do support it. This is a way I talk about jobs every single day. We are now going to be able to bring in gas. We're not doing the fracking for the pipeline. We are going to be able to bring in cheap gas. We already have projects. I am negotiating. I'm in the middle of negotiation on a large, probably the largest ever in Virginia history. The only reason we're even in the game is because of this pipeline. It will allow me to bring a, a renaissance of advanced manufacturing back. And in rural communities that have been hit hard by the loss of coal, textile, furniture, and tobacco, this is how you bring manufacturing jobs back. Now, I've told Dominion from day one, and I've had dozens of meetings in my office, Protect our historical assets. Do everything you can to protect the environment. But we have hundreds of pipelines today in Virginia. Let's be very clear. This is not the first one ever being built. We have more pipelines in Virginia, miles, and interstate highways. I don't think most people recognize that. But listen to me very carefully. If you care about the environment, this gas is going to move. So it's not a question of we have this, it's not going to go anywhere. This frack gas is going to move around the country. In, in Virginia, it's going to come to Virginia, it's going to be on trucks, and it's going to be on rail. I think that's very dangerous. I don't think that's great for our environment. We can do this with the most sophisticated, environmentally safe pipeline to do this. It's underground, I remind everybody. But at the end of the day, for me, this is about jobs. And at the same time, I believe I'm doing, and people just don't like the pipeline because they don't like frack gas. Well, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, we're going to have frack gas in this country. It's going to move around our country. It is going to come to Virginia. So my point always, do it in an environmentally safe way, but let's do it so that you can take a spur off it anywhere you want to help a new manufacturing plant. But as it relates to the authority, it is a federal issue. They do the permitting. There are state air and water permits that I have absolutely no control over. I could not stop this pipeline if I wanted to. I don't, but I couldn't if I wanted to. But you think this is the safer method? Of course it is. Mark, this gas will be coming to Virginia on rail and trucks. It's not like if we don't have this, we're not going to have it. North Carolina, you know, this gas is going to go North Carolina. You know, it comes all the way through Virginia, North Carolina. This is still going to move to our interstate uh, pipeline. Okay. It's environmentally safe. Um, and, you know, nobody wants it in their backyard. I clearly understand those issues. Uh, but it's going to, as I say, going to be underground. You're not going to see it. And we're doing it in every way to do everything we can. I have had Dominion in with meeting after meeting. Check this, check that. I have been very tough on Dominion on this project. But overall, it will create a renaissance of manufacturing jobs in Virginia. And if we don't have the pipeline, then it's going to be on our roads and our rail. And that's very dangerous. Another phone call now. Line 6, where Missy is